When we talk about raptors or dromaeosaurs, it's normally the bigger ones that come to mind, namely Utah raptor and Dakota raptor, and also Deinonychus. There are some smaller raptors who also have fantastic fossil records. For example, the Velociraptor with the outstanding fighting dinosaurs fossil. However, there is one more raptor that wasn't that big, but had significant impact on the naming of all the groups and subgroups. It also left the lasting mark on the fossil record and the Cretaceous timeline, as it is the godfather of all raptors. It is the first dromaeosaur to ever be described. The Dromaeosaurus. Dromaeosaurus means running lizard. It was first described in 1922 as Dromaeosaurus albertensis by William Diller and Barnum Brown. It is known from Alberta, Canada, Montana and Alaska, USA. Dromaeosauridae, Eudromaeosauria and Dromaeosaurinae are the three clades named after Dromaeosaurus. Dromaeosaurs are the most famous group in Maniraptora, as they gained significant popularity in paleomedia such as Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, as well as working with dinosaurs, prehistoric planet, etc. Dromaeosaurus is known from paleodogs, namely Walking with Dinosaurs, Jurassic Fight Club, Prehistoric Planet, etc. The running lizard is placed within the Dromaeosaurinae group, meaning it and its relatives are more closely related to one another than to Velociraptor and the Velociraptorinae group. Dromaeosaurus itself was 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet in length, weighing around 16 kilograms or 35 pounds. It was covered in feathers, including the avian flight feathers. While Dromaeosaurus still had the raptoresque, sickle-shaped claws on its feet, its skull was proportionally larger and much more powerful than most of the other Dromaeosaurids compared to its size, suggesting that it had a greater reliance on the jaws as a weapon. How the jaws were used is still uncertain, as they could have been for holding on to prey, crunching more heavily armored prey, etc. The skull also housed an enlarged nasal cavity, suggesting a fantastic sense of smell. Dromaeosaurus would have been a runner, potentially even over long distances, as the raptor build does indicate that. A speed of 40 km per hour or 25 miles per hour or more seems to be a reasonable estimate for the running lizard. We would imagine Velociraptor and Dromaeosaurus having similar foot claw size, since they are the same body length. Velociraptor's foot claw measures 6.5 cm or 2.6 inches. Dromaeosaurus would have had about the same for its foot claws. So how would raptors use their claws, teeth and slender bodies as well as their speed? Well, mostly for hunting down small herbivores, using the RPR method to then kill their prey. The RPR model, or Raptor Prey Restraint model, also called Ripper, would see a Dromaeosaurus potentially jumping onto their prey, but definitely restraining it with their weight and feet, as well as the claws, while employing the beak to do damage. Since Dromaeosaurus had a more robust skull for its size and probably a higher bite force too compared to other raptors of this weight, such as Velociraptor, this method would have been extra effective for Dromaeosaurus. Dromaeosaurus might also have implied the puncture and pull or flesh grazing method, biting into its victim and pulling out the chunk of flesh. This would have been especially effective when hunting bigger prey because it minimizes the risk of unnecessary injury by a bigger animal and further adds to Dromaeosaurus skill set of hunting. And you're thinking how can this work? Well the Dromaeosaurus is fast plus swift enough to run off with a chunk of flesh without getting stomped by a big herbivore. Otherwise it would get crunched by the weight of the plant eater to the point it's a pancake. Furthermore, Dromaeosaurs were on average also way smarter than big theropods because they had way bigger brains compared to body size. If they were smart enough to lay fire or make hadrosaurs cross rivers they shouldn't, as it's been portrayed in prehistoric planet, then you know they might also be able to light the hooker, learn the human language and plan an escape from an island, or even use hand signals to coordinate their pack hunting and thunder to cover their footsteps. These last two were Jurassic Fight Club references. 
Anyways, Dromaeosaurus lived between 80 million years ago to 69.1 million years ago from the Campanian to the Maastrichtian period. It also might have had a late Maastrichtian record from 66 million years ago too, one of them potentially in Hell Creek. Because of this, there is still the possibility that the WWD portrayal is correct, which is always great to hear. We're gonna go over two formations, but not Hell Creek or the two Madison formation for that matter, as the fossil records of Dromaeosaurus there are uncertain. Imagine in a week or so, Dromeo gets added to Hell Creek for certain this time. Hey, fancy seeing you here. Is it? Well, maybe you calendar stalked me and you knew exactly where I was going to be. Now, am I detecting a bit of an accent? That'd be a humiliation to this video. However, definitive remains of Dromaeosaurus have been found in the Prince Creek Formation and the Dinosaur Park Formation. The Prince Creek Formation contains mammals such as Hemolodon, on efficient dinosaurs such as the Pachycephalosaurian Alaska Cephalic Anglophi, the Ceratopsian Pachyrhinosaurus Parotorum, and the Edmontosaurus regalis, etc. Ferropod Dinosaurs, my buddy Santarex, ah I mean Nanuxaurus. The raptors Dromaeosaurus and Sauronifolestes, the bird Gruipeda and whatever the fuck Drodon is, probably Latinivenatrix or Stenonychosaurus. Funny cause in actuality Drodon is the namesake of the group even though it's invalid. What? Why wasn't I told? The last thing they want is a power struggle with entrenched management. The deal is off if you come with it. The board expects your resignation in 30 days. But well, you can't do this to me. I started this company. You know how much I sacrificed? Anyways, the Prince Creek Formation was actually quite far up north in Alaska. Hence why the ferropods were quite fluffy. Even the giant up to 30 feet or 9 meter long Nanuxaurus. Since ferropods were generally not hibernating, a fluff or a full feather coat would have given them some protection against the cold over the hot winter months. Our second formation would have been way warmer as this is the Dinosaur Park Formation of Alberta. The Dinosaur Park Formation includes invertebrates, fish, mammals, lizards, crocodilians, chorystodes and many dinosaurs such as the Ankylosaur at Montonia, the Ceratopsian Centrosaurus, Chasmosaurus, Pentaceratops and Styracosaurus, the Anifopods, Corifosaurus, Lambiosaurus and Parasaurolophus, the Pachycephalosaurian, Stegosaurus, the Onifomimids, Onifomimus, Oh shit, not good! The Canagnephid Citipes, the Raptor Dromaeosaurus, the Trudon Tids, Latinivenatrix, Pectinodon and Stenonychosaurus, as well as the Tyrannosaurids, the Splatosaurus, Gorgosaurus and many, many more. In both environments, Dromaeosaurus occupied the speed and stealth niche for 10.9 up to potentially 14 million years, making it one of the most successful dinosaurs of the Cretaceous. It could also have died out because of the Chicxulub impact event 66 million years ago. Whether it did or not, it doesn't matter! Because Dromaeosaurus left a great legacy and started the group that many would call their favorite dinosaurs, as paleontologically he started the age of the raptors. That's it for this video, smash the thumbs up, the bell and the subscribe, as only legends do that and I know you all are. Also check out Instagram for fitness motivation and inspiration, as I'm on a mission to help more people get fit. Furthermore, you can also check out Twitter to hear my thoughts on all kinds of dinosaur stuff. And with that, I wish you a splendid day or evening. Goodbye.